Hello class, we will proceed directly to module 10 na. I remember, recorded nga pala ang lecture natin sa module 9, so you can watch it na din dito sa YouTube. It's all about catalyst. Okay, our module 10 is entitled, Limiting Reactants and the Amounts of Products Formed. The objectives for today's topic are the following. First is to recall the meaning of chemical reactions, products, and reactants. Next is to review how to balance equations of chemical reactions. To recall the possible conversions in chemical reactions. To analyze a chemical reaction in order to determine which reactant is the limiting reactant and which is the excess reactant. To calculate the theoretical yield of a reaction when the available amounts of each reactant are known. And to calculate the percent yield of a reaction based on the theoretical and actual yields. So, chemical reactions, products, and reactants. If you ever happen to watch the lecture video na about the catalyst, we can recall that the catalyst is added to the reactant para mapabilis yung chemical reaction. And with that, ma-observe natin kaagad yung expected output natin, which is yung tinatawag natin na product. Technically speaking, chemical reactant is a substance that is present at the start of a chemical reaction. So as you can see sa ating illustration sa bottom left, we have here, Reactants, arrow, then products. So these reactants are separate substance which will be used to come up to a chemical product. Ano po yung chemical product? A chemical product is a substance that is present at the end of chemical reaction. So pagtapos ng mag-undergo yung reactants natin sa kanilang chemical reaction, magre-result ito in a chemical product. Basically, ito yung chemical compound malapit sa arrowhead. Chemical reaction naman is a process in which one or more reactants are converted to one or more different products. Ito yung process na pinagdadaanan ng reactants natin para mag-transform sila into chemical product. In the illustration naman, Dito sa bottom right, this is an example of reactants which are 2H2 plus O2 that undergoes to a certain chemical reaction and then it formed 2H2O which is the chemical product. This whole thing, we call this a chemical equation. Specifically, this is a balanced chemical equation. So, papaano nga po ba natin nalalaman kung balanced ang isang chemical equation? Ayan, a balanced chemical equation has an equal number of atoms of each element both on the reactant and the product side. Balik tayo dito sa example natin kanina. So, alam natin na ang reactant side ng chemical equation na ito ay yung nasa kaliwa, which is 2H2 plus O2. Yung malaking number na 2 sa kaliwa ng H, yun ang tinatawag nating coefficient. Pag wala tayong nakikita ang coefficient beside an element, automatic na ang coefficient nila is equal to 1. So, yung O2 natin ay may coefficient equal to 1. Sa product side naman, we have 2H2O. So, yung product natin, which is H2O, it has a coefficient of 2. Yung mga maliliit na numbers naman na makikita natin sa right side ng ating elements, ito ang tinatawag natin na subscript. So, kapag wala tayong nakikitang subscript sa tabi ng element, we consider that it has a subscript of 1. Okay. So, kung hindi pa po balanced ang chemical equation, paano po ang gagawin natin para mabalanced ito? We have here three steps to follow. Maraming ways to balance chemical equations actually. Iba-ibang techniques. 
these steps are what I personally use. So, ito na rin yung ituturo ko sa inyo. Let's have an example na while discussing each step. Ayan. Balance the chemical equation S8 plus O2 to SO2. So, step 1, identify the elements on each side of the equation, then make a list of all the elements. First, gawa tayo ng division sa tapat ng arrow para ma-designate natin which is the reactant side and which is the product side. Sa kaliwa, we have the reactant side. Ano-ano bang elements yung nandito sa reactant side natin? As we observe, we have here two elements, S, which is sulfur, and O, which is oxygen. So, isulat na natin sa left side, we have S and O. Sa kanan naman, which is the product side, ganun lang din. We have two elements, S and O. So, isulat na din natin dito sa right side naman. Okay, so step one is done. We already... Uh, identify the elements on each side of the equation and then we made a list of all these elements. For step 2, count the atoms on each side of the equation by multiplying the initial coefficients and initial subscripts then put the number of atoms counted to each element on the list. Ayun po pala ma'am. Para mabilang yung number of atoms on each element, we need to multiply their coefficients with their subscripts. So, with a given chemical equation, puro 1 naman yung coefficient natin, so madali lang. In our reactant side, sulfur has a subscript of 8 multiplied by its coefficient, which is 1. So, sulfur has a number of atoms equal to 8. For oxygen, it has a subscript of 2 multiplied by the coefficient of 1. Oxygen has a number of atom equal to 2. Proceeding to the product side, sulfur has a subscript of 1 multiplied by its coefficient 1. The number of atom in product side is equal to 1. Okay, oxygen in product side has a subscript of 2 multiplied by its coefficient. It will give us a value of 2 as its number of atoms. Comparing the values between the reactant side and the product side, we can see na oxygen on the reactant side has equal number of atoms with the oxygen on the product side, which is 2. Pero... Yung sulfur ng reactant at product side natin ay hindi pa equal. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pa balance yung chemical equation natin. So, let's proceed sa third step. Okay. Step 3, manipulate the coefficients in the reactant side and or the product side by finding the right value to be multiplied in the subscripts of the elements involved in the chemical reaction. First of all, kailangan nating tandaan na ang pwede lang nating pagubaguhin dito ay yung coefficient ng element. Hindi natin pwedeng galawin ang kanilang mga subscripts, so take note of that. Okay, so kanina, sa step 2, we figured out na equal lang number of atoms on both sides ng ating oxygen pero hindi ang para sa sulfur. So, mag-focus tayo sa pagbalance ng sulfur on both sides since okay naman na yung oxygen natin. Hanap tayo ng multiplier ng sulfur. With lower number of atoms na mag-i-equal doon sa mas mataas na number of atoms para sa ating sulfur. So, using our knowledge on basic math, if 1 is the lower value of number of atoms, we can multiply 8 by 1 to make it equal doon sa isa pang value ng ating uh, number of atoms para sa ating sulfur which is 8. 
So let's use 8 as the coefficient of sulfur with the lower number of atoms which is on the product side. Dito sa product side, sulfur has a subscript of 1 multiplied by the coefficient which is 8. Sulfur on the product side now has a number of atoms equal to 8. Ayan. So, we have equal numbers of atoms na for sulfur on both sides. Okay na tayo sa sulfur. But, we should not forget na compound ang nasa product side natin. So, kung anong changes ang ginawa natin sa coefficient ng sulfur, madadamay ang ating oxygen. So, looking again on the product side, oxygen has a subscript of 2 multiplied by its new coefficient, which is equal to 8. Oxygen has now a number of atom equal to 16. Okay, observing the reactant and the product side, oxygen naman yung hindi equal. So, uulitin lang natin yung ginawa natin sa sulfur. Para naman sa oxygen, by using 8 as the coefficient of uh, oxygen on the reactant side, 8 multiplied by the subscript of oxygen will give us 16 as its new number of atoms. So, observing the values, sulfur has 8 as its number of atoms on both sides. Oxygen has 16 as its number of atoms on both sides. So, equal na ang values ng number of atoms natin sa bawat elements. So, the chemical equation is now balanced. Our final equation is S8 plus 8O2 to 8SO2. That is our final Balanced chemical equation. Now, proceed tayo sa possible conversions naman in chemical reactions. Maraming mga conversions involved sa ating chemical reactions, pero dito tayo mag-focus sa magagamit natin para sa ating goal, which is ang pagdetermine ng limiting reactant. Okay, our stepping stone will be the stoichiometry. Stoichiometry, by definition, is a section of chemistry that involves using relationships between reactants and or products in a chemical reaction to determine desired quantitative data. Basically, magmamanipulate lang tayo ng relationships ng mga substances natin na involve. Okay, so looking at the illustration on the left, we can see... Na we can find moles of substance B by using mole ratio as conversion factor with the moles of substance A. Substance A and B are both on the reactant side. Also, we can determine the grams of substance B when we use the molar mass as conversion factor. Actually, the molar mass po is only the atomic mass of an element in grams per mole. Okay, let's have an example na para mas maintindihan natin. Suppose we have a balanced equation Fe2O3 plus 3SO3 to Fe2SO4 uh, times 3. If we have 5.5 mole of Fe2O3, how many numbers of moles of SO3 is needed? How many grams of SO3 can react with it? So, looking at the chemical equation, Fe2O3 is our substance A, which has 5.5 mole. Our substance B naman is SO3. Ang hinahanap natin ay ang number of moles ng substance B, which is the SO3. Given the relationship earlier sa illustration doon sa stoichiometry, we can use the moles of substance A along with the mole ratio as conversion factor para makuha natin yung moles ng substance B. 
So, moles of substance A, which is 5.5 mole Fe2O3, multiplied by our conversion factor, which is the mole ratio, we have 3 mole SO3 over 1 mole Fe2O3. Itong mole ratio na ito ay galing sa given chemical equation natin, specifically their coefficients. Multiplying those, we will get the moles of substance B, which is 16.5 mole SO3. Next, how many grams of SO3 can react with it, with a given mole of substance A? So, since nakuha na natin yung value ng mole ng substance B using the mole of substance A, we can use na yung computed number of moles ng substance B para mahanap yung grams ng ating substance B. Okay, so balik tayo ulit doon sa illustration ng relationship sa stoichiometry kanina. Grams of substance B can be determined using the moles of substance B multiplied by the molar mass ratio. Okay, so 16.5 mole SO3 is our moles of substance B multiplied by the molar mass ratio of SO3. Sabi natin kanina, the molar mass is only the atomic mass of the element in grams per mole. 32 is the atomic mass of sulfur plus 3 times 16, which is the atomic number of oxygen. May times 3 dahil sa subscript ng oxygen. Tapos, over 1 mole SO3. So, ayun na yung molar mass ratio natin. Multiplying the molar mass and the moles of substance B, we will get 1,320 grams of SO3. Ayun na yung grams ng ating substance B. So, now we know how to balance chemical equations and we already recall stoichiometry. We are now ready to proceed with determining the limiting reactants. Sa reactants natin, nagkakaroon tayo ng two types. We have the limiting reagent, also known as limiting reactant, which is a reagent that is completely used up or reacted. And we have excess reagent, also known as excess reactant, which is a reagent that is not used up when the reaction is finished. To understand the difference between the two, let's take our legs, for example. Suppose we are running continuously and at some point in time, yung right leg natin ay pinupulikat na. Though may left leg pa tayo na kaya pang tumakbo, since na used up na yung energy sa right leg natin to the point na pinupulikat na tayo, we cannot run anymore. Limiting reagent is just like the right leg. Ito yung unang na you used up o nauubos. And therefore, it is considered as the limit of our chemical reaction. Yung left leg naman is the excess reagent. Though meron pa tayong energy na natitira sa left leg natin, energetic pa yung left leg natin, hindi na natin ito manggagamit. So, ayun yung concept ng ating limiting reagent and excess reagent. Okay, we have three methods in determining Limiting reagents, ito yung mga methods na yon. Let's discuss these methods with an example. Ayan, find the limiting reagent in the given balanced equation. 2Al plus 3Cl2 to 2AlCl3. Given that, we have 2.80 gram of aluminum and 4.25 grams of chlorine. So, ang una nyo munang gagawin is to check kung balanced ba yung chemical equation, yung given chemical equation. So, since balanced naman yung chemical equation na given sa atin, okay na yan. If makaka-encounter kayo ng given chemical equation na hindi balanced, kailangan nyo munang i-balance yun bago kayo mag-continue. 
Okay, the next thing to do is to convert grams of each element on the reactant side to moles. To get the moles out of the grams value, we can use the stoichiometry pa din. I-reverse lang natin yung relationship. We will take 2.80 grams of aluminum multiplied by the molar mass of aluminum. So, baliktad lang yung unit, mole per gram, ang gagamitin natin. Since yung sa relationship natin, ay doon natin ibabase. Okay, multiplied by 1 mole of aluminum over the atomic mass of aluminum which is 26.98 grams. This will give us the value of 1.04 times 10 raised to 1 mole of aluminum. So, ganun lang din ang gagawin natin sa Cl2. We will take 4.25 grams of Cl2 multiplied by the molar mass na baliktad yung unit mole per gram 1 mole of Cl2 over 70.90 grams of Cl2 this will give us 5.99 times 10 raised to a negative 2 mole of Cl2 after nun, tapos na tayong mag-convert ng mga grams to moles and then, we will proceed in finding the limiting reagent na by using uh, method 1, method 2, or method 3. Para dito sa step na to, mamimili tayo kung anong method yung mas gusto natin. Pare-pareho lang ng answer ang mga methods na to. Pipili lang kayo kung alin ang mas prefer nyo or gagamitin nyo yung method na sinabi sa instructions kapag meron sa quiz. Okay, let's find the limiting reagent. Unahin na natin yung method 1. For method 1, this is the directions. Calculate the actual molar ratio of the reactants and then compare the actual ratio to the stoichiometric ratio from the balanced equation. If the actual ratio is greater than the stoichiometric ratio, then the element in the consequent is the limiting reagent and the antecedent is the excess reagent. So, ano po yung consequent, ano po yung antecedent? So, kapag may fraction, kapag nagdi-divide, yung consequent ay yung nasa ilalim and yung antecedent naman is yung nasa itaas. Um, in computing the actual molar ratio, gagamitin natin yung values ng moles of the elements on the reactant side na nakompute natin kanina from converting yung grams to moles. So, we have yung moles ng aluminum, which is 1.04 times 10 raised to negative 1 over the moles of uh, Cl2, which is 5.99 times 10 raised to negative 2. This will give us our value of actual ratio which is 1.74 mole aluminum over 1 mole Cl2. Okay, for the stoichiometric ratio naman, we will use the coefficients of the elements on the reactant side. So, we have 2 mole of aluminum since 2 yung coefficient ng ating aluminum sa reactant side over 3 mole Cl2. Since 3 yung coefficient naman ng ating Cl2 sa reactant side. So, this will give us the stoichiometric ratio of 0 0.67 mole of aluminum over 1 mole of Cl2. Comparing the values of actual ratio and stoichiometric ratio, Actual ratio is greater than the stoichiometric ratio. So, mas malaki yung value ng actual ratio natin, which is 1.74, than the stoichiometric ratio, which, which is 0 0.67 lang. Therefore, ang limiting reagent natin ay yung consequent, which is the Cl2, and yung excess Reagent naman natin is yung antecedent which is the aluminum.
So that will be our answer using the method 1. For method 2, randomly pick one of the reactants and pretend that it is the limiting reagent. Calculate the moles of the other agent needed based on the moles of our guest limiting reactant. Compare the resultant of the performed calculation to the actual moles of the other agent. If the result is less than the actual moles of the other agent, then the true limiting reagent is the other limiting reagent. Okay. Suppose uh, aluminum is our guest limiting reagent. Let's calculate the number of moles of the other agent, which is yung Cl2 natin, by using actual moles of aluminum multiplied by the stoichiometric ratio. Okay. The actual mole of aluminum natin is 1.04 times 10 raised to 1. And then yung stoichiometric ratio naman natin is yung ginamita natin ng coefficients 3 mole of Cl2 over 2 mole of aluminum. This will give us a value of 1.56 times 10 raised to the negative 1 mole of Cl2. So, ayun na yung values ng moles ng ating other reagent which is the Cl2. Ang gagawin natin next is ipag-compare natin yung result ng uh, values ng moles ng Cl2 itong na calculate natin na bago doon sa actual value ng moles ng Cl2 na na-compute natin kanina sa pag-convert natin from grams to moles. Okay, since the result, which is 1.56 times 10 raised to negative 1 mole Cl2, is less than the actual moles of Cl2, which is 5.99 times 10 raised to 2 mole Cl2, Therefore, the limiting reagent is Cl2. So, ayun pala, since ang guest natin ay aluminum, yung limiting reagent na hinulaan natin o prenedict natin is aluminum, dahil uh, ginamit natin yon at nakuha natin yung bagong moles ng Cl2, tapos yung result na yon ay less than sa actual moles ng Cl2 which is yung 5.99 times 10 raised to negative 2 mole Cl2, doon natin na-determine na ay hindi pala yung uh, prenedict kong limiting reagent na aluminum yung mismong limiting reagent. Pero yung isa pala, yung Cl2 pala yung limiting reagent. Ang excess reagent ko pala is yung aluminum. So, ganun natin gagamitin ang method 2. For the last method, which is method 3, use the concept of a mole of reaction, written as mole Rxn. Use the coefficients of the substances and equate them with one another. Use this relationship to set up ratios to convert the moles of each reactant to moles of reaction. The reactant with fewer moles of reaction is the limiting reagent. So, ganun lang. I-convert lang natin from mole naman to moles of reaction. Tapos, hahanapin natin kung sino yung mas uh, merong pinakamababang value ng moles of reactions. Kung sino yung merong pinakamababang moles of reactions, siya na yung limiting reagent natin. So, okay. One mole of reaction is equal to two mole of aluminum equals to 3 moles of Cl2 equals to 2 moles of aluminum Cl3. So, ito lang yung mga coefficient. Inequate-equate lang natin siya to 1 mole of reaction or mole Rxn. So, para sa aluminum, convert muna natin yung mole ng aluminum to mole Rxn. Okay. 
we have 1.04 times 10 raised to negative 1 mole of aluminum multiplied by the ratio of mole Rxn and the coefficient of uh, aluminum. So, 1 mole Rxn over 2 mole of aluminum is equal to 5.20 times 10 raised to negative 2 mole Rxn or moles of reaction for aluminum. So, ayun na yung mole of reaction ng aluminum natin. Next, let's find the mole of reaction para sa ating Cl2 naman. So, we have 5.99 times 10 raised to negative 2 moles of Cl2 times the mole of reaction ratio naman with Cl2. 1 mole of reaction, mole Rxn over 2 mole Cl2 will give us 2.00 times 10 raised to negative 2 mole Rxn or mole of reaction of Cl2. So, ayun na yung mole of reaction ng Cl2 natin. Let's compare na since yung nasa reactant side natin ay aluminum and Cl2. Ayan. Let's compare the values of moles of reaction ng dalawa. Makikita natin na mas mababa yung mole of reaction ng Cl2 kasi meron lang siyang 2 times 10 raised to negative 2 mol Rxn. Yung aluminum naman is mas mataas. Meron siyang 5.20 times 10 raised to negative 2 moles of reaction or mol Rxn. So, ibig sabihin, ang magiging limiting reagent natin is yung Cl2 kasi mas mababa siya, mas mababa yung mole of reaction niya kaysa sa aluminum. So, ayun yung answer na nakuha natin para sa ating method 3. So, pare-pareho lang ang mga answers. Method 1, method 2, method 3, mamimili lang tayo dyan kung alin ang mas prepared natin. Pero pare-pareho lang ang binibigay niyang sagot para ma-determine ang ating limiting reagent. Okay. After learning how to determine the limiting reagent, we can now proceed to determining the amount of products formed. So, under this topic, we have theoretical yield, the actual yield, and the percent yield. Theoretical yield, by definition, is the amount of products in grams formed from the limiting reagent. From the moles of uh, limiting reagent available, calculate the grams of product that is theoretically possible. So, gamit daw yung information that we have sa ating limiting re uh, reagent, pwede nating makuha yung possible theoretical value ng ating chemical products in grams. So, involved na dito yung ating product side. Yung actual yield naman is the amount of the product in grams actually formed in the laboratory. Ito yung value ng ating products in grams na nabuo along the chemical process. Kung hindi ito given sa problem, malalaman pa din natin ito gamit ang theoretical yield at ang percent yield. Ano naman po yung percent yield? Percent yield is the percent of the product formed based upon the theoretical yield. Ang formula nito is percent yield equal to actual yield in grams over theoretical yield in grams times 100%. Okay, proceed tayo sa problem solving. Consider the balanced equation below 2Al plus 3Cl2 to 2AlCl3. So, pareho lang nung kanina sa ating limiting reagent example. Given that we have 2.80 grams of aluminum and 4.25 grams of chlorine, it undergoes an uncertain chemical reaction to, ob to obtain 4.95 gram of aluminum Cl3. Find the theoretical, actual, and percent yield. Let's start by calculating the theoretical yield. To calculate the theoretical yield, we will use the values of our limiting reagent. 
and a mole ratio and a molar mass ratio. For the first part, we convert grams of Cl2 to mole. So we have 4.25 gram of Cl2 multiplied by the uh, molar mass ng ating Cl2 na ang unit ay mole per g. So, 1 mole Cl2 over yung atomic mass ng ating Cl2 which is 70.90 gram Cl2. So, pag nakuha natin yung value nun, imumultiply natin siya sa mole ratio ng ating product side which is yung AlCl3 over the mole ng Cl2 natin. So, gagamitin lang din natin dito yung mga coefficients nila. We will multiply 2 mole AlCl3 over 3 mole uh, Cl2. So, makukuha natin doon yung mole ng AlCl3. And then, para naman makuha natin yung grams na ng AlCl3, which is uh, our theoretical yield, Iko-convert naman natin yung mole na nakuha natin para sa AlCl3 to grams. So, gamit lang ulit tayo ng molar mass ratio. We will multiply 26.98 plus 3 times 35.45 which is the atomic mass ng ating AlCl3 over 1 mole AlCl3. So, molar mass. This will give us the value of our theoretical yield, which is 5.33 grams AlCl3. Okay, okay na tayo sa theoretical yield. For the actual yield naman, and the actual yield is the amount that was actually made, which was 14. 0.95 grams of AlCl3. So, ayun na pala yung actual yield natin, yung given. Ayan, yung nakalagay sa ating problem. It undergoes on a certain chemical reaction to obtain 4.95 grams of AlCl3. So, ayun na yung actual yield natin. 4.95 grams of AlCl3. Lastly, Calculating the percent yield. So, gagamitin lang natin dito yung formula. Percent yield is equal to actual yield in grams over theoretical yield in grams times 100. So, ang actual yield natin in grams is yung 4.95 grams AlCl3 over yung theoretical yield natin na na-compute kanina in grams, which is 5.33 grams AlCl3. Tapos, imumultiply nat lang natin siya by 100. So, 4.95 over 5.33 times 100 will give us the value of our percent yield, which is 92.87%. Ibig sabihin nito, 92.87% ng possible yield ang na-achieve within the chemical process. Okay. So, under this module 10, nakapag-recall uh, tayo ng mga definitions ng mga words like chemical reactions, chemical reactants, chemical products, and then nakapag-recall tayo how to balance chemical equations Nakapag-recall na rin tayo ng mga possible conversions na magagamit natin sa pagdetermine ng limiting reactant. Also, natutunan na rin natin kung paano maghanap ng limiting reactant, kung paano ma-determine ang limiting reactant at ang excess reactant. And nakapag-compute na rin tayo ng theoretical yield, actual yield, and percent yield. So that is it for our module 10. See you on the next one.